Hello YouTube, welcome back. Uh, I'm your host Chris. Uh, this is the NJ Devil 5491 show. I uh, just want to say thank you for watching this. Please consider subscribing as I have no subscribers currently. I just started last week. Uh, but yeah, anyways, if you, or just leave a comment. Talk about Terry Gilliam. Um, as you know, this what this video is about from the title. So, in this video, I'm going to be talking about a famous director, film director, and one of my personal favorites of all time. He is imaginative, and that's the key word for him. He just has, just promotes joy and freedom and imagination and having fun, tapping into your youth, having fun when you're old, too, and, and all this kind of stuff. Like, he has a great... I have his entire career on DVD. I bought each movie of his. There's like 13 of them, I think. Oh, God. I look like shit. There's a lighting. I just woke up from a nap, so if I look tired, that's why. I'm sorry. Um, but, yeah, we're going to talk about Terry Gilliam. So, let's just jump into it, right? Let's see, get going. Does anyone out there know about Terry Gilliam? I mean, he's kind of a lesser-known director. He's not like Christopher Nolan or... David Fincher or Martin Scorsese or Stanley Kubrick or anything like that. And I'm going to do videos on those directors eventually. But I just wanted to come on. It's been awesome to make a video. So uh, let's uh, let's let's uh, jump right in. So his first movie he directed was actually Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Now, Terry Gilliam is a member of Monty Python since his inception back in like the 70s, possibly earlier. I think it was early, it was the 60s. They had a TV show called Monty Python's Flying Circus. And uh, then they, they they branched off into film. The Flying Circus was well received too, by the way. Very funny. I've seen a little bit of it, not, not very much. But when it's back in the day, it would come on TV and I'd catch it. Once. But I didn't really understand it back then. <laughs> I didn't get the humor. But that's what's great about, about Monty Python. It's a really peculiar kind of humor. Very subtle, very uh, kind of subdued in a way, but but hilarious if you're focusing on the movie and you kind of have opinions about the world and your life and your relationships. This this just hits every nail on the head, and in success, rapid succession, it's just hilarious. This movie is so funny, and it's called Monty Python and the Holy Grail. David, uh, David Fincher, <laughs> Terry Gilliam, that's him right there in the middle of the Holy Grail Chalice thing, and Monty Python is a group of these folks here, some British comedians, and they made this movie, and Terry Gilliam is actually the only American member of, uh, Monty Python, only American member, everyone else is British, but they get along great, so... Uh, at least they do on interviews and stuff that you might catch on YouTube. But it seems like they're happy with their career. They're all really old now, unfortunately. But I don't think any of them have died. I hope so. Listen. Positive vibes to them. Yes, because we don't like death. Right. Um, so, yeah, Terry Gilliam, Gilliam actually directed this. Uh... But he's also an actor in it, too. And all the Monty Python people are actors in this. And they just go around. It's like a medieval type thing. But it's so funny. And it's so, so poignant. And so just like, God damn, that's so true. Stuff like that. So if you haven't seen any of the Monty Python movies, I believe there's three of them. This is Holy Grail. Sorry about that. Uh, there's also Life of Brian and Meaning of Life. Yeah. And those are also really good. Highly recommend Monty Python. I believe anyone who watches probably knows about them by now. But go watch them again if you haven't seen them. If you're, if you're new to Terry Gilliam, start with Monty Python because something's happening. Computer. Sorry about that. Uh, he's hilarious. Now we're gonna move faster through these, so don't get bored. Stick with me to the end. It's gonna be fun. Uh, I just want to make a video about a director I love and make some recommendations. So this. Is a lesser known one. Uh, it's called Jabberwocky. And uh, Jabberwock is basically a dragon, mythical dragon in British culture or something like that. Or maybe even world culture. Not really sure. But it, uh, it's uh, Terry Gilliam's first solo movie outside of 
uh, Monty Python. Uh, and it's a great movie. It's really low budget, but it's a great story. It makes it a feel good movie for nerds. And I don't know if I'm a nerd, but um, some people do, but we'll not get into that because uh, we're staying positive here. Um, but Jabberwock is a great movie. Check it out. Made in the late 70s. Um, but it's, it's ahead of its time and it's really funny. As that Monty Python humor. Okay, and then his first big film, besides Monty Python, was Time Bandits. Now, this movie sounds cooler than it actually is. Just about a bunch of uh, dwarfs, midgets. Not really sure how you say that. Um, but they show up in his kid's bedroom and they take him on an adventure to time and that kind of thing. Very 80s, but it's still a good movie. I don't hate the movie. I just don't care for it as much as some of the other ones directed by Terry Gilliam. All right, so uh, next up is, probably heard of this one, Brazil. And this is the final cut. I also have the, what is that? The behind the scenes featurette. And then the theater version, which is con considered dumb ending. And uh, basically, back when they made this movie Brazil, uh, they uh, they wanted to um, the studio wanted to change all kinds of things about it, change the ending so it's about love and every love will see through, which maybe it does. Not saying I'm Terry Gilliam 100%, but he wanted to explore more, more uh, less popular and less. Uh, I don't know, less popular ideas. But this is a really funny movie, and it's ahead of its time. It's kind of hard to watch. Like, the directing style is really haphazard, but it, it suits the story because everything's crazy in this world. And this is a big commentary on that. Um, starts out, I'll just give you the, the synopsis of the beginning. Basically, there's some kind of bureau that controls everything or d does something for the government. And uh, the character, the guy's name is like Henry Buttle or something like that. But there's a fl then a fly lands on the typewriter. And it hits T instead of B, so it comes out as Tuttle. Now Tuttle is a completely different person than Buttle. <laughs> His name's that one, but um, uh, but anyway, um, um. So they go to, so basically this Tuttle guy, Buttle was wanted for murder, but they, the fly messed up the typewriter. So now they're after a guy named Tuttle. It's the last name Tuttle. So they go to Tuttle's house and take him alive and kill him. I think, I think they kill him. They take him alive. But his wife freaks out because they're both old and she loves him. And, they, and she's like, my husband's gone. And they got a kid and a dog too. Uh, so they got the wrong person and they were really fucked up. But people were really sad, and then, so, you get this other guy, the main character, um, and he's trying, he lives upstairs, there's a big hole in his floor or something like that, or a hole in the ceiling or, or something, and then he, 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 uh, what happens in this movie? I'm actually drawing a blank, like, basically, yeah, it's just a commentary against, like, uh, Control, technology, authoritarian rule, any kind of dissemination or preventative actions against the imagination and people living their, a fun life, you know, a joyful life. Um, so, I don't know. I don't want to give too much away. It's been a while. I'm on a pot smoker, so I can't remember shit sometimes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but Brazil is like his most famous movie. It came out in like the 80s, 1985 actually. And watch the final cut. Don't watch the Love Conquers All cut. All right, moving on. Uh, this is his uh, third movie in the Imagination Trilogy. It starts with Time Bandits, then Brazil, and then B The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. And basically, Tom Bennett's is imagination seen through kids. Brazil is imagination seen through middle-aged men. And this is imagination seen through elderly people. But it's such a fun movie. Don't think it's a bore just because the main guy's old. But it's a great movie. It's one of my favorites of his. 
a lot of people may have not seen this, but maybe they saw Brazil, maybe they saw uh, Fisher King, they're 12 monkeys, but uh, they don't see this one, I think. But watch it. It's so Terry Gilliam, and it's a blast to watch, and I love that movie, Adventures of Baron Munchausen. Okay, we're at 10 minutes, so I'll try to speed up. Um, Fisher King, stars Robin Williams, R.I.P., and Jeff Bridges. So, Fisher King is about this guy who's, like, homeless, and then this guy um, who's, like, a big Wall Street executive or something meets him and then helps him out, that kind of film. Don't really care for it too much. It's kind of sad, very 80s, it's just, like, kind of... Kind of been done, predictable and predictable the whole way, the whole way through the ending and stuff. Uh, Twelve Monkeys was his next film. It's a good movie. It takes place in an ap uh, apocalyptic future. There's some time travel, and there's some love interest, and there's some uh, fucked up like authoritarian government. That's I gotta rewatch these movies. <laughs> I shouldn't have made this video until I rewatched them. I've seen all of them many times, but. Uh, um, 12 Monkeys is a good movie. It has like it's like it's like uh, it feels like uh, M. Night Shyamalan, which I know isn't so popular, but like something that like makes that or all comes together in the end. You're like, oh, so that's cool. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. Uh, next we got Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. This is a really good movie, famous movie based on the book by uh, what's that? Uh, what is his name? I can't believe I don't remember. Come on. Hunter S. Thompson. Hunter S. Thompson. Uh, wrote a book. He was a beat reporter in the 60s, kind of psychedelia era and oh, in America. I'm not sure about the rest of the world. Let me know. Did you have any 60s in your country? Um, but yeah, this is just about two guys on a road trip and, uh, they do a lot of drugs and check into a hotel and there's crazy creatures the carpets talking to them. it's a great film watch it at least once uh, now we're getting to some less less good uh terry good films brothers grimm starring matt damon and r.i.p Heath ledger so this movie is just about two brothers that go on an adventure to do something you know it's kind of boring I don't know. Heath Ledger's a cool character. And he's like, but he's a smart guy. So, whew, catch my breath. All right, rapidly finishing up the last four. Stick with me, please. This is came out the same year as Brothers Grimm, and it's called Tideland. Basically, it's a coming-of-age story about a little girl and her dad dies of heroin overdose and mom kills her cat. And it's a sad beginning, but it's about being being young in this fucked up weird world, being so innocent and just sort of trying to trying to have fun. So yeah. Do, do have fun. Alright, next up is the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, starring Heath Ledger, Christopher Plummer, Johnny Depp, Jude Law, and Colin Farrell. And uh Yet to be famous, uh, Andrew Garfield. Uh, he's also in this, and before he was famous. We came out in 09. It was actually Heath Ledger's last movie. Everybody thinks it's Dark Knight, but this was being filmed while Dark Knight was in theaters. So, uh, this is technically Heath Ledger's last movie before he passed on. Um, and it was unfinished, so they had to hire new actors to, to play his role. But they did it in a way, they changed the story ever so slightly to make it make sense why there's these different people in the situation that started with Heath Ledger in the film. So you got Johnny Depp showing up in the end, Jude Law showing up as a different guy in the end, and then Colin Farrell, a different guy in the end. So yeah, check it out. It's a good movie. It's about like uh, guys that put on a show where like, everybody hates them and they're stronger problems <laughs> it, it's just fucking uh it's a it's a good movie it's one of my favorites too it's very watchable all right so last two here uh the man who killed don quixote was supposed to be directed or sorry filmed and released 
uh, before Zero Theorem. Um, but there, there's like a storm or something. I'm sorry I'm so ignorant to the facts about Terry Gilliam in this video. I'll try harder next time. But uh, yeah, they wanted to make this movie but couldn't because of some reason. So they shelved it and then made Zero Theorem. Um, starring, what's that guy's name? Uh, Christoph Waltz. There's a vault, um, I don't know, I'm not German, so I don't really know how to say his name, but, uh, I hope you're happy in Germany, um, anyway, uh, so, Zero Theorem is a great movie, kind of sad, kind of dark, but watch it, it's a very good film, and this was before Christoph Waltz was famous in Jay and Chain and some other movies, and then finally they came back and made The, the Man Who Killed Don Quixote, basically it's Don Quixote in a movie, Sorry, Adam Driver. He probably would have cast Heath Ledger as the lead, but he was dead at this point. And it's just Don Quixote. So, these films here are his entire, Terry Gilliam's entire uh, filmography. So, he's still alive. Hopefully, he'll do some more work. Uh, maybe with Lonnie Python or in theater or in film. Um, or in animation, because that's how he started out with Mike Klingon. He's an animator. Pretty cool. Anyways, guys, that's Terry Gilliam. I love him. He's made some very unique films, and uh, I think you should check them out. Um, if you haven't already, check out all of them. Get a good feel for the director, and just enjoy the imagination of a man who values imagination. Till next time. Leave, oh yeah, leave comments and subscribe. I need subscribers, guys. I'm trying to get this going. I'm trying to build a channel that I care about and that is fun for me and uh, hopefully entertaining for some people. If it's if I'm not your thing, don't sub. But if you want to see more videos about music, CDs, and video games, music, movies, and video games, uh, then you should subscribe and just leave a comment and. Uh, We'll go from there. <laughs> but yeah, please comment and subscribe, like the video. Alright, I'm leaving you on that. 17 and a half minutes. Jesus. How do I end videos? I don't want to steal Johnny Millennium's way that I could. Until next time. Uh, I don't want to take his ways, but uh, it's a good way to end the video. I'll just say thank you for watching. Come again. Bye.